Yeah, I'm enjoying both plot points so far, both the film directing and the uh, criminal plotline. Makes me curious to see where this all goes. But already, let's move on to Act 3 now. Wait till the next day again. And forgive me if I'm wrong, but Flu Sandre is where some criminals are exiled, but they just don't go to the Fortress of Mirapi because I guess their crimes weren't severe enough. Or something like that. Yeah, I forgot what Flu Sandre is supposed to be about, but do let me know in the comments if uh if I'm mistaken. Hi, it's filming time again! Our schedule is jam-packed for the next couple of days too. We've got so many different locations and sets to cover. <sighs> anyway, let's head out and meet up with the others! Hey, we're all here again. Oh, I guess we're going somewhere else outside the city for... for shooting. Or is it just gonna skip the entire- okay! <laughs> Act 3, Lone Isle Glimpse Through Fog. I guess we're just not gonna be doing any directing. Both the filming and the criminal investigation progress at a safe pace over the next few days. Okay, so we're time skipping. Good work, everyone. We're looking to wrap with our two main ladies today. I can already smell our success. <laughs> what do you mean, looking to wrap? It means completing the filming of all their scenes. It means finalizing everything recorded so far. Damn, we just skipped straight to the end. All right. Oh, aren't you the expert now? This upcoming scene is the two musketeers' final confrontation with the Baron. There will be quite a bit of action, but no choreography beyond what we've already rehearsed. Anyway, get ready! Lights! Camera! Action! Begin! The view is beautiful tonight. It reminds me of that fateful night ten years ago. Hmm, and now that I've said it, I can even make out the faint fragrance of herbal tea in the air. Enough, villain! It's time that you pay for the death of our mother! My dear Iris, have you forgotten your manners? How can you speak like this to your own father? <gasps> I'd sooner swallow all of my teeth than call you father. Damn, that's a new insult. <laughs> I'm gonna use that from now on. <laughs> What did I expect? Seems the daughters have turned out to be just as obstinate as their foolish mother. In this world, mora and status is everything. She thought she could blackmail me using her children and force me to grant her recognition and concessions? Ah, how naive can a woman be? Mother never asked a single thing of you. All she wished was for us to live a peaceful life, just like the others. It was you who personally brewed the poison of prejudice and sent Mother to her death. Compared to that deadly poison, the two bullets that will soon pierce through your heart will be like sweet mercy. Damn, killer lines. <laughs> and that's exactly why I said you're just as naive as her. Did you really think two muskets would be enough to defeat me? Hey, I mean, bulletproof vests don't exist yet, so you're fucked. So let's see. What is stronger, Mora and Power, or the two muskets in your hands? Oh, are we getting an action scene? Oh, Jeez. hey! There are too many of them! We actually get to trial okay. them. We'll cover each other, Iris. Oh, we actually get to trial run Chip Roots. Be over us too. But before she's even out. Alrighty. Oh, right damn, there. that's a, quite a bit of a lot of damage. <laughs> Ready, aim, fire! Damn, it would be cool if they gave Ayaka a gun, too. Like, in her gameplay, I mean. To think I'd lose to my own two kids. We are no children of yours. And we'll never call that place our home. We'll burn it to the ground. <laughs> then tell me, what did you do all this for? You lost your mother, and will soon kill your father as well. What will you gain in the end, other than sentences for your crimes? We will gain justice. We will gain our long-awaited yep. justice. <laughs> Die! <laughs> Holy shit. It's over. Imagine the gun wasn't actually a prop. Somebody, like... Swapped it out for a real gun and Chevrolet just committed murder. Unknowingly. <laughs> if only Genshin would go that deep. Finally. It's over. Hello? 
Oh, no, he's actually dead. Well, we actually killed him. Oh, well. <laughs> do, 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 do. So, where will you go now, Tulip? I'm not too sure, Iris. Maybe somewhere with lots of flowers? After all, Mother always did love going where the blossoms were. What about you? I want to go visit Mother's grave. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Huh? Tulip, look! What is it? Rainbow roses! It's Mother's favorite! Yep. The rainbow rose! Look! It's blooming again! <laughs> and then later you see Traveler just, just walk by and snag it. Oh, wait, sorry, I need those materials for Linny. Sorry! <laughs> do 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 <laughs> That was beyond mesmerizing. <laughs> Even I didn't expect the scene to go so well. And we got it in a single take. <laughs> All right, everyone. We've got a wrap for Tulip and Iris. Woo! Congratulations, Ayaka and Chevrolet. Amazing performance. Great job. You've already wrapped up your roles. Thank you. I didn't expect our parts to wrap so quickly. <sighs> I wish I could savor the experience for just a bit longer. Hey, this opens up the possibility for like this event to come back. Cause honestly, I hope they do this event again with like characters from like uh, Leeway and Sumeru, for example, and Monsat too. Cause yeah, <laughs> this event has like a lot of potential for like the other regions. I hope I, I really do hope they rerun this event with like other characters in the future. <laughs> Paimon totally understands. Paimon's not ready to say goodbye to the clapper board either. Filming has really been a lot of fun. You were great too, Chevres. The way you said, long-awaited justice. It gave Paimon chills! That is indeed my favorite line in the whole book. I still remember trying to act it out in my room the first few times I read it. I mean, I will say, yeah, that's a badass line. <laughs> Whoa, Paimon would have never guessed you're that type. Who doesn't like stories where the guilty are punished and justice prevails over evil? Don't forget, I'm the captain of the Special Security and Surveillance Patrol. I mean, yeah, Justice is in her code and in her job. <laughs> Captain, I have something urgent to report. Oh. Please excuse me, everyone. I'll be back in just a moment. And speaking of your actual job... <laughs> it's okay, don't worry about us. Oh? Was she whisked away by work already? Mm, I was just about to tell her how great she did. It seemed like some urgent official business. Uh, then perhaps we should thank the stars that we were able to wrap both of your parts so quickly today. Switching around the filming schedule would have been a real pain. Anyway, I actually came over to let everyone know that we're all done for today. You can go home and get some rest. And one last thing, Miss Ayaka. Your acting skills today were immaculate as always. Are you sure you won't consider taking up full-time acting? See, I just happen to know this great troupe that's still looking for a lead <laughs> actress. I mean, she still has to go back to Inuzuma and be the Shirisagi Himigimi and whatnot, so <laughs> perhaps not. Thank you for your kind words, Director Farina. Unfortunately, there are still many matters that I have to take care of back home at the Yashiro Commission. I cannot remain in Fontaine to pursue an acting career. Nevertheless, I will make sure to treasure this incredible opportunity in my heart. Oh, that's a shame. But I understand. Just let me know if you ever change your mind. I believe it's also about time for me to take my leave. But hopefully I'll see you on set over the next few days. Even though my part's wrapped, I'd still like to swing by and help out the crew. See you tomorrow, Traveler and Paimon. See ya. Yep, see you tomorrow. Damn. I really do want to see, like, the final product now. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure we'll get a look at the final product, right? At least I hope we do. Well, what should we do next? Maybe we'll go investigate the case some more with Shivers today. Traveler, Paimon, please come with me. Well, I guess we're getting dragged into it. Huh? Where are we going? You could say that our ship has finally chanced upon one of those small remote islands of intel. Okay. Intriguing. Uh, 
I was exhausted. <laughs> Simon definitely didn't expect having to float this far after a full day of filming. So, Chevras, why did you take us here? Did you find a new clue? Affirmative. It wasn't anything conclusive, but it should show us a clear way forward. Have you ever heard of someone by the name of Emily? Emily? Oh, wait. Oh, I thought it was pronounced a meal, but yeah, isn't that the other character mentioned in Linny's voice lines? Like, yeah, that's the other character we don't know so far. So yeah, she's like the next uh, unrevealed Fontaine playable character. Oh, you mean that famous perfumer? Yeah. She's a good friend of mine. She's lent me her aid several times in the past to resolve some difficult cases. After I discovered the rainbow rose at the scene of the murder, I sent it to her. After all, she's probably the foremost expert on flowers and scents in all of Fontaine. And then? There was nothing remarkable about the flower or the trace amounts of soil left on it. But according to Emily, the rainbow rose left by the killer was derived from a very rare cultivar. Hmm. Also, I just noticed this now, but she has a mole under her mouth. <laughs> I just noticed that just now. Genshin does love their mole women, don't they? First of A and Yelan, and now her. <laughs> huh. Paimon didn't know that there were different varieties of rainbow rose. Paimon just thought they grew everywhere in the wild. Flowers that are deliberately cultivated will always show some different features from those that bloom in the wild. We already knew that the rose left at the scene belonged to a special cultivar. But with Emily's expertise, we were able to pinpoint the place where it was first picked from. Oh, Paimon gets it now. So whoever first planted that rainbow rose was probably the killer. Mm. Precisely. And after we checked what we learned against some sales records from the past, we discovered that there's only one person in all of Fontaine who could grow and sell this specific cultivar. Uh, really? And who is it? <sighs> it's the novelist. Oh, damn. Back to him. Okay. But didn't you say he had an alibi? Unless maybe everybody in that place, like, was working with him. To be clear, I haven't changed my mind about him. I still don't think he was the one who pulled the trigger. However, that doesn't mean the true culprit never visited him at his home or never purchased a rainbow rose from his garden. Hmm. Whatever the case, we will have to confirm a number of things with him. So you mean the next place we need to go is... Yes, we're going to pay him a visit at his home. Okay. Hmm, so it all ties back to him in the end. That should be his house. The, which one? <laughs> there are so many Gardamex stationed around the place. Uh, that's pretty unusual, right? Uh, yeah. According to what he told me last time we spoke, he hired them so he won't be harassed or disturbed. Huh. So there are a lot of flowers in his garden, but Paimon doesn't think we'll be able to pick one without alerting the Gardamex. Right. Which is exactly why I think there has to be a special connection between him and the killer. So, should we knock? Nah, we're just gonna bust right in and get their ass. Just wait here for now. I'd like to take care of a number of those Gardamex first. Oh damn, we're gonna kill them? But they're so far away! How are you planning to do that? <laughs> I have a sniper rifle. Don't forget, Paimon. Oh. I'm actually the real-life captain of the Musketeers. Oh yeah, well, okay, we're actually doing some sniping here, okay. <laughs> Oh yeah, isn't there like a sniping mini game? Yeah, there. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, isn't there like a sniping mini game involved in this event? Okay, I guess we're doing that now. Press the A button to start aiming, and uh, press the shoot button to fire bullets. <laughs> yeah, here we go. First person shooter Genshin. Let's go. Oh yeah. Okay, I guess we gotta. Yeah, kill. Headshot. Ah, oh, there's no headshots in this. Damn. Okay, we got him. All right, where's the last one? There you are. Die! Die! <laughs> America, baby. All clear. Let's go. All right. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Paimon's a little nervous now that we know he could be the killer. <laughs> Can we go over our plan of action again? I'll go knock on the door and make sure it's safe inside. Once we're sure that we're in the clear, I'll ask him to come with us for a quick round of questioning at the guard's headquarters. But can't we just arrest him? I mean, we can't really arrest without, like, any proof or, or an arrest warrant. We still have no evidence that he's the killer or that he lent the killer any direct aid. Still, it would be appreciated if you could pick a rainbow rose from his garden for me while I'm talking to him. It'll help the Mara Shose Phantom confirm Emily's theory. Sure, no problem. Just be careful, Chevras. Alrighty. 
<laughs> Gotta say that this game's pretty turning into America Impact with all these guns. Excuse me, Mr. Baptiste, are you home? Is that really his last name, Mr. Baptiste? <laughs> Who could it be at this hour? Oh, it's you, Officer Chavras. Would you mind accompanying me to the guard's headquarters, Mr. Baptiste? We would like to ask you some questions about a case. Oh, is it still regarding the murder case from before? I cannot confirm or deny that at this time. So it is then. Listen, I need you to come with me, Mr. Baptiste. Uh, Miss Chavras, I'll save you the trouble. Oh, and you two over there? There's no need for you to pick my flowers either. It's not time for them to bloom yet. Damn, cod. He's like hiding a body underneath those flowers or something. <laughs> By saving me the trouble, you mean? I will confess. I was the killer. What? Huh? Huh? Just like that? He... He just admitted he's guilty! Nah, this is fishy. He's covering for somebody. Please relax, everyone. I'm not armed. The musket you're looking for has been buried in my backyard. Then it's my responsibility to inform you, Mr. Baptiste that everything you say right now will be used as evidence for the inevitable trial. Yes, I am perfectly aware of that. I must say, I hate this feeling. Oh? Is it because I confessed? Or because you've been proven wrong? Both, I suppose. Huh. The guy in Flev Sandre, why'd you kill him? For the same reason as the one I wrote out in my novel, of course. I did it to exact revenge. For what, though? Hmm. I know you haven't figured out the link between the two of us. Had you done so, I'd have been taken away to the headquarters a long time ago. But that won't stop me from always remembering his grotesque face. After all, he was the one who killed my mother. Your mother is still healthy and well. I'm guessing he means his actual biological mother. You know, I was adopted as a child. I was referring to my birth mother. Uh-huh. That was never recorded in the orphanage's records. Please forgive a six-year-old child for concocting some lies to protect himself after watching his mother die right in front of him. So, your novel, it was like a record of your life? Damn. No, of course not. It was a work of fiction with many embellished parts. But, I am indeed the illegitimate son of a wealthy and influential man who abused his power to murder my mother. That part was a hundred percent real. Hmm. But the man you killed didn't have a mora to his name. Yeah, he was poor shit. He was a hired assassin. Oh. An irredeemable beast who sank his fangs into a defenseless woman just for a few bags of mora. But if that's really the truth, you wouldn't be telling us any of this now. You still haven't managed to take revenge against your father, the true mastermind behind it all. <laughs> I never thought I'd hear that kind of thing from the captain of the Special Security and Surveillance Patrol. I'm simply skeptical about your motives. Hmm. I'm also skeptical that he's the actual murderer. Like, there's no way he's just confessing like this on the spot. He's gotta be, like, coming for somebody. But at least, that's what my hunch is telling me. It's simple, really. I've grown tired of everything and don't want to shoulder this burden anymore. You may have considered me too soft to pull the trigger. Well, as it turns out, you are exactly right. I've become overwhelmed by the aftermath of the murder. So you're going to call a stop to your revenge, just like that? The true mastermind is too rich and too powerful for me. I've accepted that I will never be able to avenge my mother alone. And so what? The characters in your book never gave up. Now, Officer Chavras, I'm the one who has killed a man, aren't I? Are you trying to convince me to commit another crime? What's your father's name? How do you plan to prove the veracity of all of your claims? Mm. Well, <clears throat> I'd like to speak with you privately. Sure. Why don't we speak privately at the guard's headquarters? No, it has to be here. I must ensure that we won't be overheard. <sighs> Fine. Let's talk here. When I said, won't be overheard, I meant by anyone. Damn, even us two? All right. I would like to speak with you and you alone. Hmm. You better not try any funny, anything funny, buddy. Uh, we can go somewhere else for now. Thanks. 
I appreciate it. Please stay safe, Chevres. And if the guy tries anything, anything funny, I have All a right. sniper ready. Let's hear it. Will you really believe what I'm about to say? Well, that depends on what you're going to tell me. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Then listen closely. Hmm. Hmm. So that's how it's all connected. So, it seems you believe me after all. Do you want me to go public with this? No, of course not. At least, not right now. Then why did you bother telling me? You've read my work. What do you think? Uh... Even if you were to go public with all of this right now, he'd simply deny everything. It's been too long. Almost 20 years. Mm. Anything that could be used as evidence has long faded away. Even if there might have been a solitary island of truth once upon a time, it has long sunk beneath the waves by now. Justice will never find him. Not if you don't try. I know that as the captain of the Special Security and Surveillance Patrol, you will always stand on the side of justice. But do you really think a cushy life in prison really constitutes justice for him? I bet he could lead an extremely comfortable life in the Fortress of Meripede. What are you trying to say? I've been observing you from a distance. Your portrayal of the Musketeer was exquisite. Oh. Pull the trigger of justice against him. Let the villain get what he deserves. You want me to let you go so you may complete your revenge? No, Officer Chavras. I know that would be impossible. Hmm. He's saying I want you to complete my revenge for me. No. What I'd like uh -huh. is for you to perform the deed on my behalf. Jesus. Meanwhile, not far away. Oh, Shavra sure is taking her time. What could they be talking about anyway? Uh, you know, just casually about telling her to go commit murder and whatnot. Mm, the usual. Worried. What if he decided to attack her? I full confidence in Shepard's fighting skills. If anything, he's the one I'd be worried about. Oh, uh, you do have a point. Still, do you have any idea who the rich person might be? And why the novelist doesn't want us to hear what he's saying to Chevrus? Hmm. Sorry to keep you waiting, you two. Oh, that was fast. Hey, how did your talk go? Uh, did you figure out who the rich person he mentioned was? What should we do next? I've already sent someone to escort Baptiste back to the headquarters for questioning. He wasn't lying about the musket. It was indeed buried in his backyard. Hmm. But what about the name? Did he tell you the name of the rich guy? Yes, he did. But for now, I have to return to the special patrol. There are still a few loose ends I need to tie up. Ah, uh, just keeping the suspense, keeping his name a secret until the very end, aren't you? What's going on? I feel like she's keeping something from us. I'll probably be quite busy over the next few days, so apologies if you don't see me on set. All right, Paimon understands if you can't tell us everything you know. We'll just keep an eye on the steambird then. Actually... There's still something else I need your help with. <laughs> I need you to go kill this guy for me. Up, oh, Act 3 completed. Wow, okay, that was way shorter than Act 1 and 2. I'm guessing these last three acts should be pretty quick, all things considered. Alright, Act 4 now. Hmm, we haven't seen Chevra since that night at Baptiste's place. Well, guess there's no point in worrying about it now. Let's go join up with the others. Let's go. Good morning! Ayaka and I were just talking about you! <laughs> when are you guys not talking about me? Is Shefras still not joining us today? Uh, probably not. We haven't seen her either. Hmm. Yeah, I do kind of wonder if she'll go through with it or not. The whole murder thing. Huh? That, that's such a pity. Director Farina said that we've only got a few small scenes left before wrapping up the entire thing. I mean, it'll be fine, right? I mean, Ayaka's and uh, Chevrolet's parts are done, right? She even said that she'll get me into a couple scenes, so everyone will have a chance to shine in front of the camera. Oh, sweet. We were also planning on having a victory feast once we're all finished filming. You can join us, right? Of course. Also, where's Ayato in all this? What's he up to? Mm, if only Chevrolet was here. I still haven't taken a photo with her. 
<sighs> I'm afraid that can't be helped. Those special patrol folks are like phantoms when they've got a case on their hands. But to be honest, I'm even more concerned by what I read in the Steambird earlier this morning. Oh. It said that. I can't something went public of it. case was none other than the author of the Two Musketeers. Eh. <laughs> wouldn't that affect our performance? Like, wouldn't that affect how the play is gonna be? Um. Yeah. Viewed. Oh yeah, I heard about that too. He came over and confessed his crimes, but gave no explanation as to why he pulled the trigger. We didn't know about this case at all when we joined the film. Is it going to affect the reception of our work? Yeah, I'm concerned about that, because it could lead to, like, our potential viewers being cut in half, you know? From a pure publicity standpoint, this will draw a lot more attention to our film. Mm. I have to say, though, that no director can be perfectly comfortable with garnering attention through means other than artistic skill. Yeah, especially through controversy. That's not a... That's not good publicity. To be fair, I feel like that ship sailed the moment you allowed yourself to be named as the director on our posters. <laughs> fair enough. It's not my fault that I'm super popular. <laughs> what was that saying again? My popularity has... Uh... Sunk to an all-time low? <laughs> what? What? Chiori, what the fuck? She really doesn't hold back, does she? Holy shit. What do you- But also, what do you mean? Farida's super popular in Fontaine. Spread to the four corners of Tabat. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Act 4, where the roses bloom. Damn, we're kind of going through all these acts pretty quickly now. Uh, excuse me, everyone. Xavier! Feels like it's been ages since we last saw you. <laughs> Even though you're the producer. I've been talking non-stop with the film association, and I'm absolutely swamped trying to coordinate the film's marketing. So forgive me for not being around more often, but please believe me when I say that I will make sure everyone's hard work gets the exposure it deserves. Oh, seems like you've been fighting your own battles. <laughs> yes, that's one way to put it. Oh, and before we begin the final round of filming, please allow me to finally introduce you to the original investor of our film, Mr. Morris. Oh, he came back? Um, a pleasure to meet you all. Yes, glad to make your acquaintance, Mr. Morris. We've heard about the issues you've encountered with your financial situation, and genuinely hope that things have taken a turn for the better. Hmm. I'm curious as to why he's coming back now. Hmm. May he mayhaps be the uh be the mastermind of the whole thing? Maybe he is the father of uh of the author. This Mr. Maurice guy. I uh, know, it just seems kinda sus that he's just coming back now, conveniently now of all times. Hmm. Just a hunch, but I think this guy's like the main villain. <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong, who knows? Oh, well, uh the situation has uh Indeed improved somewhat. Don't worry, Mr. Morris. Accidents and last-minute challenges happen all the time. There's no need to blame yourself over it. The good news is that we're almost done filming now. And I would even say that this is the best story I've ever seen. Is that so? I see that that's, that's great news. Hmm. Okay, well, he's nervous for some reason. Is he perhaps being blackmailed or something? All right, now that we've gotten all the pleasantries out of the way, let's get the show on the road. We'll mostly be filming typical people and scenery from the streets today to improve the sense of environmental ambiance in some parts of the film. Oh, <laughs> and there'll be a cameo for Mr. Kamisato and Miss Yoimiya as well. Wait, what? They'll be used to show outsider perspectives on the fates of the two musketeers. Wait, why is I... Wait, wait. Oh, wait, oh, Mr. Kamisato. I thought... <laughs> I, I was gonna say, <laughs> it's not a good idea for the main actor to have a cameo in her own movie, right? <laughs> That's right. Ayato should be here any minute. Okay, so at least Ayato gets a cameo in the, uh, in the movie. That's good. Excellent! Then let's start with the scenery shots. Camera and clapper loader, you're up. All right, good. get clapping, Paimon. Yep, we'll be ready! Remember, all we need are some wide zoom shots of the streets. 
If you happen to find some particularly lovely patches of flowers and grass, feel free to grab some close-ups of those as well. Yeah, feel free to touch the grass while you're at it. Ready? Lights! Camera! Action! Okay, now move the camera slowly. I know what I'm doing, Farina. Uh, try to focus on that flower. Take a close-up shot of the flower. Mm -hmm. What's wrong? Just adjust the focal length a bit. Take a close-up shot of the flower. Something the matter? Uh, what the fuck? The camera seems to be broken. It's not responding like usual. Uh, huh? But wasn't it working fine for all the days before? Veronique, can we try a different camera? Uh-oh. No problem. How about this one? All right, let's give it another try. Okay, that was weird. Camera! Action! Also, I realized, holy shit. <laughs> also, I just realized those are Paimon stamps on the uh, clapperboard there. What the fuck? Mechanical malfunctioning noises. What is going on? Don't tell me. This one is broken too. Veronique, do we have any other spare ones we can use? Um, mm, I'm afraid we only brought these two today. What? Then go find a workshop to get them repaired right away. Hmm. Oh, and you too, Bono. Go find our spare <laughs> camera in the warehouse and bring it back to the set. On it. The way she just fucking screamed out Bono. <laughs> Greetings, everyone. My apologies for the delay. Hmm? Is something the matter, Ayaka? It seems like there are some issues with the filming equipment today. We're stuck for the moment. I see. Huh. Well, let's what? not just stand here twiddling our thumbs. Actors to the makeup booth. We'll start on the next scene as soon as we get a working camera. What convenient timing, I gotta say. As soon as that guy showed up, our all our cameras just stopped working. Hmm. Have some type of ironic returns of a repaired camera. The people at the workshop told me that the part which holds the lens in place seemed to have fallen off. That's super strange. It was perfectly fine just yesterday. Well, no time to dwell on that now. Let's get back to filming. Ahem, quiet on set! <laughs> Again! Everyone. Lights! Camera! camera. Action! By the way, have you heard about that recent murder case? Hmm. Yes, I have. It seems that they've caused quite the commotion in the city. I heard that the chief of the guards is so mad about not catching the culprit that he's about to explode! Oh? I find that quite hard to imagine, considering how he already looks most days. Director! Director! We have a problem! Hey, yo! You're not supposed to be here! Hey! You can quit at the rest of the scene! Also, if I just leave it like this, will the camera just continuously pan to where it's left? Yeah, it's still panning! <laughs> Hold on, hold on. I want to see how far the camera can pan. Oh, wait, it stops right there. Never mind. Oh, we're in the middle of a take. Couldn't you wait until we wrapped up this scene? No, director. Our film, all the finalized film that we've been keeping in the case has disappeared. What? Oh, wait, well, what did you say? Ooh. Also, was that a Vine Boon sound effect? Like, what the hell? Mr. Bono. Please, take me to where the film was kept right away. I'm coming too. No, Yoimiya, you have to stay here. Oh. What the fuck? Okay, th there's something definitely sus going on. As soon as this guy shows up, everything just starts going wrong. Okay, listen up. Everyone who's not working on this current scene can go with Bonell to look for the film. Everyone else, stay put and wrap up the scene. Unbelievable. How could all these problems happen in just one day? Uh, it's up to, it's a fucking uh, investor guy. I'm telling you. After some time. We're back. Uh, well, did you find anything? How did it go? Did you find the film? We found it in the sewers. What? Huh? In the sewers? Is the film still okay? Oh, bro. Don't tell me we have to like reshoot everything all over again. We discovered it just in time, so we should still be able to salvage it. The others are checking now to see if we lost any specific scenes. Fuck, that's gotta fucking suck. Oh, you scared me for a moment there. I nearly thought we had lost everything. 
See, that's why you always make a backup, folks. Just so your months of your fucking works doesn't just go poof. I really don't want to experience that feeling of despair again. No, oh, it's okay, Farina. It's just a film. Okay, but who could have stolen the film and dumped it there? Um, could it be uh, some competitors working on other films? But if they wanted to harass us, why wait until the last day? To destroy all our hard work. Like, up to the beginning, I guess. Hmm. Uh, yep, Jeffy saw that guy. Okay, we don't have time to really look into it right now. Let's strike while the iron is still hot and wrap this thing up once and for all. Yeah, let's finish it. Also, let's go ahead and kill that guy with the glasses back there. <laughs> Even though unexpected situations, problems stuck during the, no, the film processing, like to we prevail in the end. Our entry to the festival, The Two Musketeers, has now concluded filming! <laughs> Yay! Also, notice how the uh, no, notice how the glasses guy over there is not clapping. He's not happy about this. Ugh, time on is spent. It's so late already. Even though the filming process proved to be extremely challenging, everyone provided valuable and unique contributions to the final product. Thank you all for your dedication and support. And just like Director Farina, I would also like to extend my most heartfelt thanks to all of you. Really, you've all helped me so much. I just... All right, all right. Let's <laughs> save the awards speech for later and hopefully also get some rehearsals in before the real thing. Anyway, now it's time to party! Yeah! Let's all make our way to the beach and have a celebration feast so loud and fun that even the blubber beast will want in! <laughs> also, somebody keep an eye on the film. In case someone... In case some dickhead just comes in and ruins it again. Wow, oh. this place is hopping! Everyone's finally getting to relax after wrapping up the film! Let's go chat with someone! Alright, I want to chat with little Maurice here. Hey, why did everything go wrong the second you showed up? Have you ever seen a fireworks show, Mr. Morris? It's pretty amazing. Um, I'm afraid I haven't, but I'll, I'll take your word for it. Hmm, why being so dodgy there, eh, Maurice? Hey, you got something to confess? Hey, hey? I feel like it's just so obvious that it's him that's the bad guy that there might be just some sort of twist where he's not actually the bad guy or something. Just a feeling. Hey, Cherry. Oh, this is turning out to be quite the party. <laughs> Why do you sound so distraught about it? <laughs> I was thinking, if this film turns out to be a success, could I ask the two of you to stay and be a part of my crew? <laughs> no. Uh, of course, I'll definitely increase the pay for next time. I'd be more than happy to, Mr. Xavier. Thank you for the offer, Mr. Xavier. But I've made some plans to go on a journey to the other nations once the festival is over. Is that so? Well, then in that case, bon voyage, Miss Veronique. Please feel free to get in touch once you've returned to Fontaine. Okay, Farina or the Kamisato siblings? Let's go talk to the Kamisato siblings first. Hey, Ayato! How's your work been going? Everything went rather smoothly. Thank you for your concern. Ayato told me that we've already confirmed the dates for some Inazuma Fontaine cultural exchange events. Ooh. So the next time we visit, we'll be doing so in our capacities as the representatives of the Yashiro Commission. Oh, that's great! Then maybe Paimon will be able to find Fontaine detective novels in Inazuma from now on! <laughs> oh, wait. Wouldn't Yaimiko get upset if that happens? That would be stealing some of her business. As long as the novels are sufficiently interesting, I don't think she'll mind. <laughs> You've got a point. She's always complaining that light novels have become bland and too predictable, after all. <laughs> be glad she's not around, otherwise she would be get zapped on the spot. The cultural exchange won't only feature literatures of both nations, of course. We have also made plans for cross-cultural engagements in the fields of gourmet cuisine, uh, toy making, and artisan craftsmanship. <laughs> this it wouldn't surprise me if this is like teasing like the next Iezuma Fontaine event. When the time comes, be sure to visit and participate in all the events. Oh yeah, of course I will. You know I will. 
I'm always there for all these Genshin events. <laughs> Alright, what about you, Farina? You enjoying all the uh, desserts here? Holy shit, that's a lot of desserts, I gotta say. Farina! Oh, my darling clapper loader and camera operator. You both worked really hard. Paimon thinks you worked even harder than us. Honestly, Paimon was getting a little tired of playing with the clapperboard by the end of it. Worst of all, Paimon started having dreams of you shouting, Lights! Camera! Action! Into Paimon's ears. <laughs> the actual dream can't even start until you've yelled that! Uh, hey, if anything, shouldn't I be more grand and delightful than your dreams? <laughs> <laughs> We've been through so much together, and that's how your brain remembers me? Uh, that, that's not Paimon's fault. We've just used the clapper board too much lately. Hey, you signed up for the job. No complaining about it now. <laughs> Anyway, what's most important is that we've wrapped the film. I'm pretty confident that we'll take first prize. <laughs> you mean the Farina Award? Hey, no need to mention the official name. <laughs> <laughs> what a surprise. Farina wins the Farina Award. <laughs> Wait, now that you mention it, if we did win the prize, would Farina just get a statue of herself? Yeah, that just seems a bit e egotistical, I gotta say. <laughs> Come on, I don't need that kind of attention. Xavier can accept the reward on our behalf. Or, you know, could give it to me and I could put it in our teapot, you know. But just imagine! Farina accepting the Farina Award and holding a Farina statue. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm going back to my dessert now. <laughs> you all can keep discussing that on your own. Oh. I guess we got more to talk to. Oh, back to Chiori now. Chiori! Hey, you two. Are you not really into these kinds of big social occasions? Uh, not particularly. But this is still better than Fontaine Fashion Week. <laughs> but if this film becomes a big hit, people will definitely come flocking to your shop. Yes, that's highly likely. As long as the film can premiere as planned. Uh, why do you say that? That's a bit ominous. Are you still worried about the case? That, and all the obstacles we had to face today. <laughs> yeah, and coincidentally, they all began when that guy showed up. Hmm, you're right. It's as if all our bad luck just manifested at once. But why today of all days? Uh-huh. Hmm? No. No, it's nothing. We've already delivered the film to the editors, so there should be nothing more to worry about. <laughs> and then just a news guy just comes in. Hey, the editor has been murdered and the film's been stolen. Oh, for fuck's sake. How are you doing, Mr. Morris? You having a good time? Well, you could say that. Uh, do you happen to know when the party is scheduled to end? Why? You in a hurry to leave, huh? <laughs> Judging by how much fun everyone's having, I'd say probably not until well after midnight. Is there something that you still have to take care of at home, Mr. Morris? Oh, well, uh, I'm just not a late night person, so I might take off shortly. Yeah, yeah, sure thing, buddy. Oh, no! Uh, silly me. I almost forgot something super important. Oh, uh, what is it? I prepared a whole batch of fireworks for the party, but I forgot to bring them over from the warehouse. <laughs> Maurice, you go fetch them. Fireworks, you say? Well, that's, uh, truly a pity. Sorry things didn't go as planned. Could you help me carry them over, Mr. Morris? I won't be able to fetch all of them by myself. Me? Uh, uh, are you sure that you can't find anyone else? Not has to be you. <laughs> I just wanted to make this surprise for everyone. The warehouse isn't far from here. We'll be there in no time. Pretty please, Mr. Morris. These are some of the best fireworks I've ever made. So I also want you to see them before you leave. Hmm. They're stunning. I promise that they'll be a once-in-a-lifetime experience that you'll never forget. Well, God, I don't like where this is leading. Oh, no. Don't you dare do a thing to you, Mia. I swear to God. Uh, but... It's okay. Just come with me. If we're sneaky enough, nobody else will see us leaving. <sighs> All right. Don't you dare do a thing to, to you, Mia. Right over here. I moved the fireworks there in a Oh, actually playing it, sir. So it shouldn't be too much work bringing them back. Shh. Don't let anyone else see us. I still want it to be a surprise. 
Oh boy, I don't like Buddhist <laughs> I don't I don't like uh, Yoimiya going into a room alone with a potential murderer. Oh god. Yoimiya, please. Please don't. Please don't be in danger. Uh-oh. Uh, wait here, Mr. Morris. I think the light switch should be somewhere here. Uh-oh, it's a cutscene. Uh, why did I have to get roped into this? Uh, what was that? Oh, shit! Oh, shit! Uh, who's there? Get me out! Get me out of here! Did you really think you'd get away, Morris? Oh, fuck. Uh, it's also you, you actually shot your Emil. Oh, God. You, you've got the wrong guy. It wasn't me. I, I, I'm not the killer. <laughs> you know, Eliza died a far more heroic death than this. Oh, jeez. She fought your assassin to the end to save the children she had hidden beneath the floorboards. <laughs> that is Eliza's pendant. The one with a photo of you two inside. The one you gave her. Ring any bells? It's a fake! It has to be! There's no way! No way your assassin didn't destroy it, you mean? <gasps> oh, shit. <laughs> Did you ever love her, Morris? Or was killing her always the plan? No, 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 please. Listen to me. I told Eliza to keep us a secret. I paid her plenty for her silence. I never thought she'd keep the child. Everything was gonna come out, and I had no choice! She forced my hand! No! I'm begging you. I have money. Just, just name your price, please! You can keep your Mora, and you can go to hell. Oh, Jesus Christ! Oh, oh, the gun's empty, okay. I'm Captain Shavraz of the Special Patrol. Morris, you're under arrest for Eliza's murder. Huh? Oh, is you and me a fine then? <laughs> oh. oh, wow. Wait, we were all part of it? Oh, that's some good shit right there. <laughs> Whoa! Holy shit! You're under arrest too, prop manager Veronique. Oh, fuck, I needed something sus about well, perhaps her. Perhaps <laughs> I should call you. The second musketeer. Holy mother plot twists! What the hell? <laughs> Wait, what's going on? This wasn't in the script. Oh, that that that's fucking cool. We were all a part of it. To to get his ass arrested and also her ass arrested as well. Holy shit, holy mother plot twists. I need to I need to take a step back and comprehend all that. Holy shit. <laughs> Drop the gun, Veronique. Why? Why would you keep me from exacting revenge on this heartless monster? Drop your weapon. This is my final warning. <sighs> what? What is going on? Do I have to spell it out for you, Morris? Everything that took place just now was staged to get you to confess the truth. Oh, clever. <laughs> this last part is all improv, of course. <sighs> Damn, and the way fucking Chevrous blocked that bullet with her own gun? That was fucking badass. Oh my god. They went so hard with that cutscene. Oh my god. Uh, Chevrous, you told us you wanted us to help you stage a play. You never said anything about the second musketeer. It's because even I had no way to confirm my theory until now. Oh. Thank you for your performance, Yoimiya. Could I trouble you to go and bring in the other special patrol members? They should be on standby just outside. Damn, even you and me was a part of it. Okay, so this is all a plan by us to, to lure him inside here. Okay. Oh, and please tell the other cast members not to worry about us. We'll be rejoining them shortly. On it! Damn. <laughs> what a fucking so plot twist and a half. Think, Morris? Care to talk about what happened 20 years ago? <laughs> My patience is limited, you know. Don't force me to take you back to the interrogation room. I'd wager that you wouldn't last for more than a minute in there. Not to mention there's a girl here who wants to kill you. <laughs> with the recording we made, you have no chance of winning in court. Cooperating with us now is the most practical move. All right. I'll talk. I hired an assassin to murder Elisa. Mm. She once worked as a maid on my family's estate. 
She was very beautiful, and after some time, I fell for her. We kept our relationship a secret and carried out an affair for some time, but it wasn't long before she became pregnant. And if my parents ever found out, they would have stripped me of my inheritance and status, driven me out of my home. I also didn't expect Elisa to insist on bringing the pregnancy to term. She even asked me to leave my family and travel far, far away with her. She believed that you were truly in love with her. And then you fucking killed her. Monster. I didn't have a choice. I gave her a large sum of Mora, told her to leave the family and to get rid of the baby. But then years later, she sent me a letter that there were photos of two children and she even asked if I could find some time to visit them. Huh? Two children? Paimon thought Baptiste was the only... Uh, you mean... Yep. Even if she had the children against your will, you could have just ignored the letter entirely. Why kill her? I had just gotten engaged to be married to an heiress from another wealthy family. So if anyone were to find out about Elisa, my life would be completely ruined. I didn't have a choice. Fuck you. Fuck your I didn't have a choice fucking argument. Fuck you. No. You always had a choice. Yeah. You just made the wrong choice. Again. <sighs> Do you know how it feels to watch your mother be killed right in front of you? My brother and I were hardly even school age yet. We were hidden beneath the floorboards, grasping each other's hands like a lifeline. We were so terrified that we didn't even know we could ever take a breath. All we could do was to watch Mother try to fight back and then collapse to the floor. Jesus. Even after the assassin left, we were still too terrified to leave our hiding spot. We thought that he might come back. It was only until the next evening when we finally climbed out and gathered around our mother. But she had already become cold and stiff to the touch. You made up your mind right then and there to bring this case to light. Not only that, we resolved to get our revenge. Holy shit. And that's why you became the Musketeers. No, that's why I became a Musketeer. The man from before was also killed by me. My brother had nothing to do with it. Okay, so he wasn't responsible for any of the murders. Okay, I called that then. But then why? Why would he turn himself in? I guess to protect her sister, I guess. I figured as much. Uh, you did? I once told these two that he didn't look like a killer to me. Uh-huh. His confession from that night also rubbed me the wrong way. I think what really tipped me off was, how could I not feel a sense of regret in him? Because he didn't actually commit the crime. Mm. Huh? He confessed faster than any criminal I've ever met. But he didn't say a single word about you. He insisted that he was the sole perpetrator in the case. But after the questioning ended, I disassembled the musket we dug up from his backyard, put it in front of him, and told him to reassemble it. <laughs> Wanna guess how far he got? He didn't do shit with it. <laughs> he had no idea where to even start. He's never touched a gun in his life. Based on that, I determined that he was not acting alone. He only surrendered himself to draw our attention and create a moment of opportunity for his partner. So, I decided to play along. And as expected, the second musketeer followed us without hesitation once she saw Morris get separated from the rest of the cast. Damn. So this was both a, a plot to catch him and also to catch the musketeer at the same time. That's... Wow. Fucking, this writing though, this writing is fucking 10 out of 10. Holy shit. Besides, why else would he call the novel The Two Musketeers? But how did you know it was Veronique? I figured it out the moment Baptiste told me his father's name. Oh? That so-called financial crisis was all just a ruse. He just wanted to sign up as the investor and then leave the film without any source of funding. Ah, oh, but then why'd he come back? After all. He has a vested interest in minimizing the reach of this story. Oh. It's really just the same thing as what he did to Elisa all those years ago. I guess, yeah, if, if, if the film went public, like, people would have eventually connected the dots and he would be arrested. Ah. Damn, this quest is really, really good so far. Holy shit. Human scum. But then Xavier pulled out all the stops and got the film made against all odds. Morris couldn't have that. With the killer in custody, he figured it was safe to act. And so he came to visit the set today, just as I expected. Wait, so you were behind all those 
those mishaps today? I mean, yeah, of course. Like, what do you think everything went wrong the second he showed up? <gasps> As for the identity of the second musketeer, I assumed they'd probably stay close to Morris and look for an opening. And if they already knew that Morris was the film's investor, then that narrowed the list of potential suspects as well. Furthermore, being the props manager would allow the culprit to avoid scrutiny by purchasing mechanical parts in the name of the crew. Ah. And, oh yeah, that's also another thing too, like, Estelle refused to make any prop guns for uh, the film crew, so how would, how would she get the prop guns in the first place? She made them herself. Ah. With that hypothesis in mind, I went back to check Baptiste's orphanage adoption records. Guess whose name I saw on the same page, just a few lines from his. <sighs> My brother. He trusted you. <laughs> mm. As in he trusted me to perform the deed on his behalf? He trusted you to stand on the side of justice. And that's exactly what she's doing. I am. Mm -hmm. I thought you could do it as well. Oh, the look on your face when you told him to go to hell. I really thought you'd put a bullet in his brain. <sighs> you know what he has done. Are you telling me that you'd rather see him spend the rest of his life living like a king in the fortress of Meripede? Hey, I don't think Risley would let that happen, buddy. I will never be able to forget the feeling of my mother's cold, lifeless hands. And you would call this ending fair? Is this what you call justice? I won't lie, Veronique. I did hesitate when your brother first told me about the truth. I wondered. I agonized over whether I should really put a bullet in his head. So why don't you? Because that should never be how justice is carried out in this world. Perhaps, to you, justice is simply reciprocated. An eye for an eye, and a life for a life. But everyone has their own understanding of justice. If everyone were to pursue their own definition of it, there would be no more order in this world. Today, you'll kill Morris, and tomorrow, his children may come for you. True, true. The world cannot render judgments based on a desire for revenge. That will only lead to a cycle of revenge, as well as the destruction of order and civilized society. Fontaine is founded on a set of laws and a standardized code of justice. That is why we are the nation of justice. But with all that said, I will promise you this. Morris will not lead a cushy life in the fortress of Meripede. Chivalrous? The rest of the special patrol is here. All right, get their ass. Thank you so much, Yoimiya. Letelier, Terena, please take them away. I still can't agree with your reasoning. I know. Justice has not been delivered. At least, not today. <sighs> hmm. Man. 10 out of 10 writing right here. Holy shit. God, is it me or has Fontaine's like writing been like the best Genshin has ever had? Good lord. Like, the art quest is already good enough as is, but this quest, this quest has me hooked like in every single manner. Oh my god, with the drama, the fucking betrayals, everything. 10 out of 10 quests, I gotta say. Even though we're not done with it, I gotta say it's a 10 out of 10 quest. It is so, so good. Chevres. Let's go. We should give an explanation to the crew. Are you okay? I think you made the right call. Thank you for your concern. I'm fine. I'm just thinking about the things in life that have driven people to take justice into their own hands. You explain everything that happened to the rest of the crew. So I guess only you and me was a part of it. And Chevrolet and us too. Who would have thought Morris would turn out to be... Uh, I'm at a loss of words. How could he have done something like this? I'm just glad that you're all safe and sound. Who knew that such a labyrinth of cases would be behind this story? Well, what should we do now? We have a finished film, of course, but should we still go ahead with the premiere? Hmm. What do you mean? Shouldn't you be even more motivated to spread the word now that you've learned the truth? Chiori is right. I'd also like more people to see this story for themselves. But the real ending of the story seems to have deviated somewhat from the one in the script. Is that still acceptable to you, Miss Chevres? Mm. The call is yours. 
We still have time to reshoot an ending if that's what you'd like. No, it's fine as is. I like what we have for the catharsis. Romanticism is what gives works of art their appeal. Fiction is able to explore means of restitution that could never work in real life. True. Just like the real world, the world of stories also has its own set of rules and justice. These different possibilities are what initially drew me to reading in the first place. Sounds good to me. I support your decision. What about Veronique? Will she be okay? Hmm. She will soon face her judgment alongside her brother and Morris. Best not put them in like the same cell or like, you know, actually separate those guys altogether. <laughs> Who knows what kind of bad stuff would happen if you put them all in the same Fortress of Mirapede. If I had to guess, they'll probably all be sent to the Fortress of Meripede. I'll make sure to give Risley a heads up about it. Uh, yeah, I don't think that's a good idea. I don't think it's a good idea to send them all to the same place. Oh, you mean that kind of heads up? Exactly. Though, well, what is that kind of heads up? Ahem. All right, then the matter's settled. Now that everything's been taken care of, there's no reason for us to keep looking all gloomy and grumpy. Let's get back to the feast and enjoy each other's company. We'll be starting the post-production process tomorrow. You should join us, Shavras. You missed the first few hours of the party, didn't you? All right. Count me in. Then I'll wait for you over there. There's still some good news that I'd like to share with Chevras. Alrighty. Traveler, Paimon, could you wait for me by the sea after the party ends? I'd like to go on a brief walk with the two of you. Absolutely. See you then. Absolutely. Thank you very much. God. Yeah, this whole event just feels like a Chevrolet story quest. Even though she's a four star. Like, that's just insane to me. Man. What a great quest. <laughs> They're playing some TCG. <laughs> Would be nice to have some background music going on here, but you know, <laughs> this is nice. Oh damn, it's raining. Sorry for the wait. Uh, <laughs> do we really have to stand out here in the, the freaking storm? Oh wait, no, it's over now. Oh, we weren't waiting long at all. Is there something else you wanted to tell us? No, I don't have anything new to share. I just felt that since you were my investigation partners, I should have another conversation with the two of you. Uh. Traveler, how would you have responded to Baptiste's request if you were in my shoes? I would have done the same as you. I would have helped him get his revenge. I don't know. I don't know, honestly. I'm gonna go with I don't know. When I was young, my father often took me here to swim. We'd come rain or shine, even when it was freezing cold. He told me that swimming was the best activity to train one's strength of will. You could never give up before reaching the shore, especially when the water was cold. Oh? Why is that? Otherwise you drown? Because the moment you give up would be the moment you die. Yeah. At that point, I still hadn't received my vision. One winter, the chilly wind felt almost like knives on my skin, and the seawater was so frigid that it numbed my toes the moment I stepped in. Ugh. I cried and begged my father to spare me from having to swim across, but he wouldn't listen. He used to be a member of the Special Patrol as well. You could say it was his way of educating his children. I mean, that's not really education, that's straight up child abuse. Like, what the hell? That sounds awful. When he saw that I wouldn't stop crying, he just picked me up and tossed me into the icy water. Ah. The bone-chilling cold took away my senses. I couldn't feel anything but fear and rage. I waited for my father to save me, but one look and I knew he'd already started swimming for the opposite shore. I realized that if I were to give up, I really would die right then and there. What a shitty father. Like, I get there's like harsh punishments and stuff and whatnot that parents have to do, but that's just straight up evil. Like, what the fuck? I used all of my strength to try and catch up to my father. Those few minutes felt longer than my whole life up until that point. I did, however, make it to the other side. I've never felt afraid about anything in my life after that, nor have I ever cried again. That way of teaching would have never worked on Paimon. Yeah, I don't think that was the right method for anyone. Yeah, no. Nobody should have to go through that. Even if you do, like, grow from it. Like, no, it's not worth it. It's just that... Working now as I am in the pursuit of justice... 
I still sometimes feel like I've been tossed into that winter sea all over again. The anger and the helplessness. Shivers. But the worse I feel, the more I know to never give up. The alternative would be to forever lose myself among the waves. Mm. Anyway, how about a race? <laughs> Neither of us will drown, but we can still see who swims faster. Hey, I'm game. Uh, you guys go ahead. Paima will grab the clapper board to mark the start of the race. <laughs> All right. Oh, damn, we're actually having a competition. All right. All right, let's do this. I have a swimming contest of Chevreus. Oh, we're just swimming across the lake. Okay. <laughs> Dive and cannonball. Shoot the ducks on the way. It's absolutely vital. <laughs> Whoa, that felt good. You were so fast in the water, Chevreus. You were swimming even faster than Paimon could fly. Uh, so about the special patrol. Did you join because of your dad? Partly. But I'd say I was more inspired by the heroes I read about in stories growing up. Oh, so it's due to your love of stories. I mean, nobody can really appreciate their dad after doing that to them, to their children. Like, what the hell? Of course, it was only after I joined the special patrol that I learned that truth is often stranger than fiction. Oh, yeah. Come on, let's walk a bit more. To be honest, I do sometimes question whether the decisions I make are the right ones. But I know that no matter what, I must keep swimming. Because the only thing I've got my eyes on is the shore in the distance. And muskets. Oh, oh wait, I just realized we're walking to the guy's house again. Thank you for coming on this walk with me. I feel a lot better after getting all that off my chest. You're welcome. Anytime. Huh. We're nearly back at Baptiste's house. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Huh, you're right. I didn't realize we were so close. He really did plant a lot of flowers. It's just like how he described it in the story. Huh? <gasps> Wait. Paimon, Traveler, look! The rainbow roses in the garden. They're in full bloom now. Ah, uh, <laughs> where the roses bloom. All right, can I pick them? I need some materials for Liddy. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Even though it's a bit late, I must thank you for investigating this case with me. Not on behalf of the Special Patrol this time. It's a personal expression of gratitude from yours truly. Hey, anytime. Uh, about your family. Oh, you want to hear more about my father? To be honest, I didn't spend that much time with him. He was always busy with the Special Patrol, so he would often return home really late at night. Some nights, he didn't come home at all. Once, he didn't come home for a long time. Maybe a whole week or so. When I went out to buy food, I learned that he had become a criminal. And oh, shit. extension, that made me a criminal's daughter. So that's how he ended up in Flavre Sandre. But we can talk about that another day. Uh, about the case. I actually have a lot of sympathy for Veronique and Baptiste. I can understand the hatred they feel for their father, but that doesn't mean I'll allow them to walk the path of evil, even if it might lead to another sense of justice. Hmm. And about the film. Films are different from the real world. They're a form of art and represent the wishes in people's hearts. I adore the two musketeers, and I'm very happy to have had the opportunity to act the role as one. I can't wait to catch the film when it premieres in the Opera House. I'm looking forward to seeing the audience's reaction to the climactic ending. <laughs> Please take care. Thank you for looking out for me. I'll see you at the award ceremony. I'd be very surprised if we don't win. If we just lose to some random NPCs, just imagine. What the? What a treasure hoarder doing here? Hey, get out of here! <laughs> Damn, though, Shepherds is a really good character. <laughs> Holy shit. Even though she's a four star, I cannot wait to pull for her when she does hit the banners. And yeah, Erica Lindbeck just does a fantastic job voicing her. She's always good at voice acting as female characters with complicated backstories. But alrighty, we're coming to the end uh, with Act 5 here. We gotta wait for two days to uh, wrap this whole thing up. I really do want to see the film for ourselves. I, I really do hope we like see it. Alright, back to the Fontaine Festival. Some more time passes after that. The film had a successful premiere and the musket murder case also successfully comes to an end. Xavier, it's been a while. Hey there, you two. Sorry I've been scarce. I've been buried in marketing and preparing the film for release ever since we wrapped post-production. The award ceremony is today, right? Paimon wonders if we'll win the Farina Award. I'd give it a 90% chance. <laughs> More like a hundred. Farina! Oh, Paimon didn't know 
know you were already here. You're earlier than everyone else. I'm sure the others will also be here in no time. Uh, hmm. Xavier, if we end up getting called on stage, shouldn't you come up with a name for our crew? Oh yeah, we don't really have a name, do we? But, uh, but we don't even know if we're going to win. I wouldn't want to jinx our chances by celebrating early. <laughs> Just open your eyes. Surely you've seen the audience's reactions to our film. We've had nothing but critical acclaim. You've also had conversations with the Opera House's operating staff, right? Didn't they want to increase the number of showings? With the Mora you've made from the box office, you can now open your very own film company. Damn, were we really that successful? <laughs> but that's all credit to my amazing crew. You've all helped to make this a reality, so I can't be the only one asked to come up with a name. Well, give it some thought. I'm sure the crew will respect your choice. <laughs> it better be a good name, that's all I'll say. All right, but before that, Traveler and Paimon, could I trouble you to quickly pay a visit to the Fortress of Meripede? Oh, we're actually going to go visit the, the criminals? Huh? But shouldn't we stay for the award ceremony? I wanted to ask you two to invite Shavras to join us at the ceremony. Oh. She's one of the lead roles, after all. I haven't been able to find her recently, so I haven't had the chance to invite her personally. According to the papers, the culprits of the musket murder case will be personally escorted today by the captain of the special patrol to the Fortress of Meripede. Oh, Paimon gets it now. It'll be a piece of cake for us. Yep, just wait here, Xavier, and maybe try to come up with a few snappy-sounding names. All right, then I'll leave you to it. Okay. <laughs> will we really win an award? Hey, come on, stop being so nervous. Trust me. When have I ever been wrong about something like this? Imagine we just fucking lose and then just everything we did up to this point, it has been for nothing. Could you fucking imagine? <laughs> but alrighty, back to the fortress we go. Alright, Chef Russ, are you here? This is as far as I'll be taking them. Hey! I'll leave the three of them to you now. There's T-Man. Got another errand to run? Something like that? I'm expected at a party. <laughs> Speaking of that party... Now that's something you don't hear every day. Found a new pastime? No, it's just a special occasion. Shavras, Risley! Festivals really do bring people together. It's been a while since I last had so many visitors at the Fortress of Meripede. Call it the festival spirit, I guess. <laughs> yeah, you could say that. Even our head nurse has gotten herself all worked up preparing super deluxe nutritious shakes. <laughs> just one gulp and you'll have met all your nutrition needs. I almost forgot about Siege Bean, honestly. Yeah, when's she gonna be playable? Also, Clorand as well. When are they gonna be playable? Were you talking about work just now? We've already finished discussing everything. So, what do you think about my heads up, Mr. Risley? Hmm. I believe I haven't yet made any promises or guarantees. But you also didn't shoot me down. <laughs> Here, how about this? You could give everyone a copy of the newspaper. Perhaps on the day when the cover story happens to, oh, I don't know, expose a certain someone's misdeeds from 20 years ago? <laughs> what are you incentivizing, Chevrus? What, are you going to incentivize every criminal in here just go beat that guy up? <laughs> hmm. I suppose then a certain someone may soon find himself the most unlucky person in the Fortress of Meripede. While another two people will soon be hailed as heroes. Ah. Uh -huh. Speaking of heroes, did you two need something from me? Oh, uh, actually, we're here for... You're here to invite me to the party, right? Don't worry, I didn't forget. Ooh, then let's head back right away! See you, Risley! Happy Fontanalia Festival! And the same to you. Bye-bye, T-Man. Please, go and enjoy the festival. Kinda sucks he has to stay in prison while festival's going on, but oh well. I guess that's his job. Alright, back to the festival we go. That's good. <laughs> At least the uh, the guy won't and be the living a cushy life. The award oh. for the first Fontanalia Film Festival is... The Two Musketeers! Yeah! Holy shit! Oh, wow! They make a whole ass poster of that? Oh, can I keep that poster, please? Oh, that's, that's a, such a cool looking poster. Holy shit. <laughs> Was there any doubt? Congratulations, Mr. Xavier. 
We won? Uh, uh, I can't believe it! <laughs> I, I really can't thank all of you enough! See? My takes on Fontaine's entertainment industry have never been wrong. Now, please welcome to the stage the producer of The Two Musketeers, Mr. Xavier! Yeah! <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all so much for your recognition and support. While I'm up here, I would love to give special thanks to... Time really flies, huh? <laughs> yeah, just, we're just not gonna listen to what he's saying. It certainly feels that way. It feels like it was only yesterday when you were teaching me to hold a musket. Will you come back to Fontaine again? Of course. I'm very fond of the city. There are so many novel and interesting things that it's been hard to keep track of them all. But how about you? Would you be interested in visiting Inazuma? I mean, honestly, you fit there with your purple hair and with your purple hair and everything. I can't say the thought has crossed my mind before, but I'd be willing to consider it now. Yeah. I will be eagerly awaiting your visit. It would be wonderful if you could visit my home and enjoy a taste of our tea and desserts. Yeah, let's keep in touch. Did you accomplish all you came here for? Yes. And you should visit Inazuma again sometime. How has Ogura and her business been? Oh, the textile shop? To my knowledge, she's doing quite well. Tell her I said hi. I certainly will. <laughs> I heard the thunderstorm has stopped. Yep, the vision hunt decree's over. Yes. And the war has also been brought to an end. Peace and prosperity has returned to the islands. I quite like the sound of that. Perfect for hanging textiles out to dry. I'd like to offer my thanks again to the entire cast and crew. Without you, I would have never completed this film, much less had the opportunity to be standing on this stage. Damn, it, it, it kind of looks like we're not going to be able to view the film after all. Ah, well. With the support of my entire crew, I would like to officially announce our film company, Musketeer Pictures! Hey, that's not a bad name, actually. Musketeer Pictures? Not bad. Oh, that has a really nice ring to it. Then in that case, let's please welcome all the members of Musketeer Pictures onto the stage for a commemorative photo. Oh, Paimon didn't know we'd also be taking pictures. Director Farina, I believe you are the most deserving person to raise this trophy. <laughs> Please, accept this trophy up yourself. Huh? No, 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 no. There's no need. It's so embarrassing. <laughs> it's an honor the director deserves. Yes, I agree. I can't think of anyone better for the honor. Just accept that you're not getting out of this. <laughs> Ready, everyone? Three, two... One! Cheese! Musketeer Pictures! Hey! Oh, that's a good looking photo. Oh, please tell me we can hang that up in our teapot. That, that looks so, so good. Also, damn, the Farina Award's a bit uh, smaller than I thought it would be. Ah, uh, that's such a cute picture. And, well, yep, that's the end. Oh, we, oh, we do get the picture! Hell yeah. Oh, definitely gonna be hanged up on my teapot later on. And yeah, with that, ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of the Two Musketeers, or well, the Roses and Muskets event. Damn, this is this is a really, really good event. Holy shit, Act 4 was so, so freaking good. I, I loved everything. The setup, the directing, the murder case, everything. Everything was just so, so good about this event. Holy shit. And yeah, I'm also kind of glad that we get, like, yeah, the Inazuma characters interacting with the Fontaine ones. Oh man, they really need to do more of these cross-region events in the future. The, these are usually like the best events in Genshin, like ever. But yeah, that wraps it up for the uh, story of the Roses and Muskets event. Uh, before we end it off, let's go around and uh, yeah, talk to the, all the uh, playable characters in the world because because I do know most of them like uh, hang around and uh, you can talk to them and whatnot. So I will do that before I end it off for today. So let's go ahead and talk to Chef and Yuemiya here. Miss Yuemiya. We haven't had the chance to talk, but please accept my thanks for everything you've done over the past few days. Oh? But I feel like I didn't do anything out of the ordinary. I'm very grateful for your assistance during that special performance in the warehouse. It was always going to be somewhat risky to engage and draw away Morris all on your own. Yeah, I'm surprised she kind of picked Yoimiya to, to do that, like, risky, risky job. 
you're only a civilian and have never been trained to act in such a dangerous situation. I mean, then again, she did, like, uh, protect people from the Vision Hunt Decree. Don't say it like that. As the director's assistant, it was my duty to help out the crew however I could. It was an honor to help you solve the case. I have to admit, though, my heart was thumping super hard the entire time it was laying on the ground. Oh, I was scared that everyone would notice. <laughs> you did great. Oh, and before I forget, if you ever visit Inazuma, please come and pay a visit to Naganahara Fireworks. I'll make some fireworks for you. I even know what shape we'd make. I'm guessing... a musket. <laughs> <laughs> Telling you now would ruin the surprise. If you really want to see it, just come and visit me. Confirmed. We're gonna get a musket firework <laughs> the next time we go to Inazuma. That's sweet. Okay, then we got Farina and Xavier over here. Lady Farina. Oh, and the poster there as well. Just one more photo of you. I would also love to get your autograph, uh, just as a memento of our time together on the crew. Oh yeah, I think I also got the poster over there as a furnishing. So yeah, hell yeah, we can put the we can put that down in our teapot. <laughs> Although I do wish we could like put that giant poster in our teapot as well. But oh well, I digress. Hey, I've had enough of the camera flashes from when we were all up on stage. <laughs> but. but Lady Farina, you are the best director I've ever met! The most photogenic maiden in all of Fontaine! This kind of lively and celebratory setting is exactly where you shine. I believe all photographers would agree. Come, the brightest star of our land! Show us your light! <laughs> the camera is waiting to sing praises of your beauty! Well, I'm flattered, but, uh, but... <laughs> <sighs> all right. I'll humor you and try a few more different poses. But I don't have to hold the trophy, right? Uh, uh, of course. You may pose however you like. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. By the heavens, my luck has been beyond belief. I'm having a hard time coming to terms with it now. Hey, you will pay us after, <laughs> after you got all that money from the box office, right? Right? Okay, uh, seems like none of the other playable characters are around, so I guess I'll go around and try to look for them. I believe you can talk to Ayato somewhere, but I should need to find him first. Oh, hey, there's Ayato. Oh, I didn't expect to meet you here. Uh, about your drink. I've been told that this is a beverage called Fanta. I quite like its unique taste. <laughs> but I much prefer boba tea. The slogan, a font of refreshment, is rather catchy as well. I'm starting to wonder if I could incorporate it into our cultural exchange initiative. What would happen if we were to add some sprigs of mint into Fanta? <laughs> I believe this is an idea worth testing. Or perhaps we could even take it one step further and mix in an equal amount of milk tea medley. Uh, that's probably not the best idea. <laughs> if it fails, I'll just give it to Toma. He likes it anyways. <laughs> uh, but for some reason, I suspect that experiment wouldn't turn out well. Hey, considering your passive is to make suspicious food, I don't trust you. <laughs> uh, about the film. Thanks to you. The film was successfully completed and the Yashiro Commission secured a collaboration project with the Palais Mermonia. If another opportunity was to arise in the future, perhaps I should take on the chance to act as the protagonist. I would like that, actually, for him to be, like, to, to act as a protagonist. Or, perhaps, you think the role of villain would fit me better. Yo, that'd be cool, too. All right, have a safe trip home. <laughs> Thank you for the well wishes. I will take good care of Ayaka and Yoimiya. I would like to wish you safe travels on your next journey as well. Very well, Ayato. Okay, uh, oh yeah, Chiri should be hanging out by her shop, right? I believe her shop is, like, somewhere around here. I just gotta find it. Oh, yep, there she is. Huh, it's you. Is there something I can help you with? About Chioria Boutique. Interested in our couture services? Just give me the word. Thanks to you, we were also able to premiere the film in time. Its success has increased the reach of my brand. But we really didn't do anything. There's no need to be humble. You helped Xavier and Chevrus, and even Kirara's told me many good things about you. They are all my friends. You've done far more than what you give yourself credit for. Uh, about your work? I am merely a fashion designer. I don't have anything else I moonlight as. But when you run a business, it's inevitable that as you make more friends, you'll also encounter all sorts of thorny issues. You scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. <laughs> it's just the common sense of business. And about the film. 
Xavier is over the moon now that he's actually won the Farina Award. Maybe I'll actually find him in the fountain the next time I see him. <laughs> the demand for couture at my boutique has also increased. So much so that I don't have enough staff to handle it. Looks like I'm one step closer to achieving my dream. Anyway, you will always be welcome at Chioria Boutique. I would love to see you both again at the upcoming Fontaine Fashion Week as well. It would be cool if like uh, Chiori made us like a like a an outfit because yeah the traveler doesn't have any skin so far which is kind of odd considering they're the main characters so yeah hopefully one day I hope it's gonna happen that uh we get like an outfit for the traveler some way somehow and probably from Chiori boutique all right don't have any more questions okay see you around bye bye for now Chiori Okay, I decided to look up where Ayaka is. She's by the uh, Ice Wind Sweet boss, uh, recording them apparently. And yeah, it's probably a good thing I looked her up because I would have never thought to look for her here. Uh, yep, there she is. Oh, she she waves at you when you get near her. I'm so glad we were able to complete the film. Thanks for taking care of me while I was here. Your acting was brilliant. Really? Thank you. At first, I simply tried to work hard out of a desire to not become a burden to the crew. It would have been so embarrassing if the filming had to stop to accommodate my lack of skills. But director Farina was both patient and knowledgeable, and Shavras and Elaine taught me a lot about the scenes and details. It was all thanks to their help that I was able to grow comfortable with the role. And even with all of that said, I still got a little flustered with praise <laughs> especially since everyone including you were complimenting me at the end did you have a good time yes i visited many places with yoimiya in between the filming sessions the elegant streets the beautiful flowers and greenery and the dreamlike underwater world everything i saw was shine like stars in my memories it also brings me joy to think that perhaps you've marveled at those exact wonders as well. <laughs> I probably have. Uh, thank you for your hard work, Ayaka. It's nothing at all. I don't often have the opportunity to wander out into the world like this. Not only did I make many new friends during this trip, I also picked up many new skills from everyone around me. I will cherish this experience greatly. Oh, and I'm also going to bring some conch lens back to the Yashiro Commission as a gift. If we could enjoy them with some coffee... <laughs> Perhaps it'll feel as if I'd never left Fontaine at all. Have a safe and relaxing trip back home. Mm -hmm. Thank you for looking out for me. Please do take care of yourself during your adventures as well. If the stars align, we'll see each other in Inazuma again. Yeah, I feel like everything that's been said is teasing in like another... Like, event with Inazuma and Fontaine again, which I cannot wait for when that does eventually come. Oh, hey, she actually just, she actually moves around. So, hey, everyone, uh, Future Space Edge here, uh, recording from my alt account. So, apparently, there's some hidden character locations and conversations that you can find after each act of the Roses and Muskets event. So, from what I found out, you can actually go ahead and find some other characters after, like, Act 1 and Act 2 and Act 3 and whatnot. So, that's what I'm doing here on my alt account to uh, go ahead and find those characters. So, yeah, pretty much I'm going to be playing through the whole quest again just to find those hidden character locations and conversations. Just so I don't miss anything out on this event. So, yeah, I'm actually going to go through Acts 1 all over again and find all the hidden character locations and uh, conversations. So, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Oh, yep. Okay, so over here you can find Ayaka and Yoimiya. Here, Yoimiya. Try some conch madeleine. No, you ordered it, Ayaka, so you should be the first to try. To be honest, I ordered it for you. You're fond of desserts, aren't you? <laughs> no, you're such good friends. <laughs> well, in that case, I guess I shouldn't refuse. Let's try some together. <laughs> All right. Mmm. Mmm. This is amazing! Oh, the texture is so soft! You can feel the super rich aroma of butter as soon as you take a bite! <laughs> Aftertaste is pure bliss! Okay, calm down, you, Amia. You, you're talking like you're in Food Wars. Great. I'm glad you like it. I enjoyed it, too. And I really like the swirly design. I've heard that it's supposed to look like a barrel conch. I've never actually seen one myself, but now I'm really curious about what it looks like. Hey, Ayaka! When you can find the time, would you like to go search for one underwater with me? 
All right. Why don't we go right after this? Great! Then let's plan! There are so many places I'd like to visit with you. Aww. I'm kind of glad they showed this, by the way, because <laughs> I, th I think we already know that Ayaka and Yoimi were friends, but not to this extent. <laughs> like, I don't think their friendship was actually shown that well <laughs> through the entirety of Inazuma, so I'm kind of glad they show that. <laughs> oh, there, okay, so Xavier and Chiori are here after Act 1. Oh, how lucky I am to have so many kind-hearted people assisting me. Yeah, yeah, just watch your step now. Everything I've been through is starting to pay off now. <laughs> there finally is a light at the end of the tunnel. Ah, I see it now. What lies before me is a whole world of hope. No, what lies before you is the fountain. <laughs> I hope you can start seeing clearly or you'll end up taking a dip in it. I, I really like Chiori. Her fucking sass fucking kills me sometimes. <laughs> Oh man, I can't wait till she comes out and be play and becomes playable. Now here's something I truly didn't know. I believe if you go around here, you can actually find him talking to Nuvlet. Now I probably should have checked this like after Act One, but yeah, there you go. You can actually find Ayato talking to Nuvlet. Yeah, so after Act One, Ayato says he's gonna go talk to Nuvlet, and yeah, I should have figured out this this sooner, but you can actually find Ayato uh, talking to Nuvlet. Indeed, Monsieur Nuvlet. I'd very much appreciate hearing your thoughts on everything we just discussed, including my initial proposal and the general direction of our potential cooperation. Your proposals are reasonable and quite well thought out. Your sincerity and wish for our mutual success was evident in your words, so there's no need to be so modest. Thank you. So, what's your decision? Hmm. <laughs> uh, I mean, we, we kind of know they accept in the end, so... If you're asking for my personal opinion, I'm willing to cooperate in full based on my own opinions and my impression of Inazuma's culture. However, Fontaine doesn't run simply based on the feelings of one individual. I'm sure Inazuma must be the same. Everything must be done in accordance with the regulations that are in place. Yes, of course. I will submit a written proposal outlining the details of our potential cooperation to the Palais Mermonia within a week. And I look forward to hearing from you. <laughs> I, I guess that's how I expected them to interact. Just two hide your daddies just talking to each other casually. According to the Phantom anyways, I think Ayato's still pretty young. <laughs> but alrighty guys, that about does it for the Roses and Muskets event, everybody. Holy shit, this is such a great event. I love the story of it, and yeah, just every single character involved. I also did like this as basically like our introduction to uh, Chef Roos as a character. And Chiori too, but it was mainly focused on Chevrus, and uh, she was pretty much like the yeah the main focus of this quest, which I really do appreciate. And yeah, now I can't wait to go ahead and pull for her when she does come out in the uh, second phase of 4.3 with Raiden and Yoimi as banners. God damn though, this was so so good. This was basically like yeah a Chevrus story quest somewhat. But yeah, I loved Act Four where we basically like just busted the man behind everything, and also the uh, musketeers that were hunting for him. That was so so good and so so well written. I definitely need to watch that like cutscene over and over again. But yeah, guys, with all that said, that will draw it to the end of the Roses and Muskets events. Leave a like on the video if you enjoyed my reaction. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what are your thoughts on this event. And subscribe to the day if you want to see some more videos or streams from me. But yeah, guys, with all that said, thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see you guys again in the next one. Take care, and have a good night. And I wish you all the best for 2024.